it's that time of the week, fun of the weekend. Everybody's here. Thankfully, the Rhino's back in the studio. Yeah. But of course, welcome back to another brand new episode of the Beyond Position Podcast. Three of your most favorite co-hosts in the entire world, myself, Eduardo, my boy B-Rad, and the White Rhino, a.k.a. Brett. Yeah. So what's up, fellas? How's everybody doing today on this lovely Saturday as we're recording this? It's a beautiful day outside, as we can see. The yeah. uh, angelic sun is just hitting our uh, vibrant faces. You know, um, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Copacetic. Off, don't please do not call me B Rad. B Rad. Oh, Audience, okay. don't uh, love that. You don't, don't, you don't like it? Really? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. oh, I mean the the only association is B Rad for Malibu, and I'm not anything. Oh, like dude, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. That's literally what what I came from. Really? B Rad. It's B Rad from Malibu. <laughs> I Malibu's know most that. wanted. Dude, the chapstick. Hey, no. <laughs> driving, there's a four Maverick, right? Or what is it? Is it chapstick? Is the guy from? Oh, Malibu's yeah. most wanted. Yeah. Oh, Jamie Kennedy. Oh, Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. I but anyway, no. My yeah. apologies, my apologies. Life is good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, you know this, so that's funny. You, you know, you you see it as a way of like uh, throwing shade, right? B rad, don't say it. And then, uh, but he's always calling me baby boy. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like ten years older than your ass. Oh, I'll be shit. baby boy. No, no ass. Will this, is a, it. this is really a counseling session, really, to, to open the podcast here. So, as well, you can see, I don't take a lot finding, personal. We're there, finding out some truths. There's but. no ill will behind anything I ever say. So, uh, you know, just just putting it out there. Yeah, it's one of the things I just say with yeah. with just saying it. You know what I'm saying? Like I never I never liked being called Eddie. Oh, I never liked it. Oh really? Yeah, you but I let, I let it slide. I don't. I don't Ed or Ed no, one. I just never let it. Like it's one of those things for me. Like I'm not gonna like let it ruin my day. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, that's what Man. you call me. You call me. This but. is oh. wild. All three of <laughs> Dude, us wow. have been calling each yeah. other things that we don't like other people to call so, us. Checkmate. <laughs> Wait. So what do you prefer then? Just Ed. Ed, Ed or Eduardo? Ah, see, because what's funny okay. is I started calling you Ed. If you know yeah. that, I, yeah, I, I have started calling him yeah. Ed. Because it's funny, because I got another homie named Louie, and I started calling him Lou for some reason. Lou? I don't so, really know why, no, that's interesting. I wish yeah. you would have told me. No, this good. is a good no counseling session, as it you really said. It really but, is. But, you know, like, like I love throwing the E at the end of names, like, you know, like if it has, like Eddie, or there's other names that, yeah. like, uh, like Grantley or something, you yeah. know? I've never once heard you call me Bradley. <laughs> Brad, I've called you Bradley boy. I'll say, uh, boy, hey, I'll say Bradley that. boy, yeah. you know, oh, okay. like, but it would only be in writing. I wouldn't say it. It would be it like, Hey, what's up, Bradley me. boy. It wouldn't offend me. But I actually, would like, you be offended if I said that? No, not at all. No, Bradley For some boy. reason. And you know, what's funny. I was just saying this, uh, the other day to a coworker, right? Like I, I, for some reason enjoy, like I, I like, it, it makes me feel almost like fuzzy inside when a woman calls me Bradley. Oh! I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just that hmm. uh, it's it's. I think it's like it reminds me of like my family maybe or like my my aunts and my my mom and like. Dude, stuff. we're getting Freudian over well, here. Well, because they're the <laughs> only ones who ever really call me that. Yeah. Right? And so it's funny. So uh, a lady that I work with calls me Bradley, right? Well, now we have two new employees and they both call me Bradley. Nice. And I kind of, I actually kind of like it. I'm like, oh, well, you're getting either. older and it's yeah. Yeah. like a yeah. more so. of a, like a, uh, like a mature name, Instead you know, Brad or Brad Whoa. or Chad, you know, my you name kinda is kinda Bradley profile host yeah. of Bradley <laughs> Jeffries. <laughs> I am co-host of the Beyond Expectation podcast. Right. <laughs> and no, my name is Ed. There's literally a saying. <laughs> there's literally a saying. Straight though. up Latino, just Ed. You're like, wait. Not, okay, never mind. I was like, <laughs> hey, there's, there's literally like an entire demographic of people that people that others refer to as Chads and Brads. I mean, what, like, a, like, like I know a, Chad like is a like a. It's a bro. Okay. Like, uh, dude, bro, what's up, bro? Like, oh, like, yeah. Like that. Like the I see that fan. social like, media. Oh, that's a Chad. Yeah. But what's a Brad? But what's hilarious is his name is Chad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you we're, don't have to beep that out either. Yeah, yeah, we're referring to, uh, are you referring to the last clip from the last episode? Yeah, exactly. We were talking about like the Cowboys, how they say it's their year every year. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's what's a Brad I, or a Chad? Uh, that was a funny clip. You know way. what? That was, I watched the last episode. I, okay. I was out of it. Uh, I was asleep <laughs> i mean dead i mean like okay well you know hippa well tell that story okay, but it's, it's going to do you yeah, want to tell the story so, oh, yeah. well so i get this a gout that's why you don't see me with the beer anymore because uh i had a beer yeah last week and i was just testing it i was like maybe i'm just gonna test it and then i just broke out in gout and the pain so i just you know kept going to work and going to work just walking on i'm just pimp limping everywhere you know and then uh Friday came and I don't know what happened, but I went to sleep and I didn't wake up until like four in the afternoon on Saturday. 
That's fucking insane. And it was like, and the only thing, it was like, I must have been in that much pain where I just finally just... <laughs> you, you knocked you out. Literally. Yeah. yeah. That's and crazy. body was just like... Whoa. Slow down. Well, I told Damn. him, I was like, man, it's kind of unlikely of him for him not to hit me up when I text you, like, thinking we're all, like, on the same page to record an episode last weekend, uh, and then we didn't hit it the whole day. I'm like, man, hopefully he's okay. Dude, <laughs> and, and, like, <laughs> normally, I'm all about like, it. Hey, Even if something comes up, yeah. I'll be like, hey, man, something come up or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, I think I think life poached me. Yeah, I <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because I was actually also slightly getting a little worried, you know, because, um, I mean, obviously, Ed and you guys know, you know, have been friends for a long time, but like, I, I thought it was kind of odd that like you didn't say anything. So yeah. I was like, hey, you, did you call him yet? Dude. And then I, I was said, like, I said, you might want to call it was, him. It was weird because I just like, I woke up at, at four that afternoon and then I just felt overwhelmed with guilt because yeah. I'm like, dude, I missed our thing today. And then I didn't, I, it was like s Sunday morning when I approached you, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was Sunday morning. I was just like, dude, I got to hit him up. Just let him know. Like, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, so one could say that you broke gout. When you oh. finally got out of bed, you broke gout. Yeah. Like you broke out. Yeah, I broke out <laughs> with, the, with the bro gout. Hey. So that was, it was your leg that was affecting you, right? It was, it's a big toe. Oh, it really? hits me on the big toe. Uh. And, uh, and so every walk you feel, it's just, dude, anyone with gout, I mean, you read the comments if anybody who had gout and if you've had gout, <laughs> Just tell them what it's all about. But people oh, will say it's worse <laughs> than a broken bone. Yeah. That was a worse bar. than a broken bone. And <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they're like, I'd rather get it. So, you know, so I'm in overdrive, like trying to figure out how, you know, it, I'm anti pharma. So yeah. I won't take medicine for it, <laughs> but I will take natural supplements. Yeah. I'd rather just deal with the pain and then just find a natural supplement like weed. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Or fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, or fentanyl. <laughs> fentanyl. <laughs> fentanyl. Oh, it's, uh, no, that's big pharma. It just, it just went onto the streets. Into the so, streets, no. right? Uh, well, man, glad you're doing good, man. Glad you're here. Glad you're, you know, joining us because it's never complete without the the trio. You know, what I'm yeah. Saying? This so, is where, yeah, we need the the, the trident. Exactly right. Yeah. The the triangle, the trifecta, whatever you want to call it. Right. That makes sense, right? I was trifecta. talking about the trident, like uh, oh. you know, like the. Uh, anytime oh, you yeah. see something water related, they have the trident. It's like a, a water god or something. I never heard of that. Yeah, that's yeah. Greek stuff. Oh, so, but ours, Ukraine, that's nah, their, that's I, I their totally thing. I totally know what you mean. I feel like ours would be like dicks, though. Uh, <laughs> just, 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 all, just all flopped on the side. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. That, that, was, sorry, I mean, sorry. that was essentially what the tip touch sorry, was. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, yeah. It, the, 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 we were, it was yeah. totally named after yeah. like the three of us standing you know, all facing and each other in? and then just all oh. just like barely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we had to clean it up. You know, oh, yeah, we, we had the microphone. We need to be family friendly, you know, family yeah. friendly, uh, kid friendly. Yeah. Stuff, so we had to evolve definitely. But uh. nonetheless, again, I'm glad you're back, brother. And you're doing good. Thank you. Happy to. Very good to be back. So what's going on today in the world, fellas? Um, I do want to put out there before you get to uh, you were talking about something about Adam Sandler. Yeah, we're um, going to go. Yeah. So uh, uh, unfortunately, the you know, Carl Weathers, he passed away, right? The guy that played Apollo and also he played Chubbs and Happy Madison. He passed away. Billy, so Billy RIP. Madison. Billy Madison. Yeah, yeah. Billy Madison. So RIP to him. Phenomenal actor. Uh, he wasn't in Happy Gilmore? He was uh he wasn't Happy Gilmore. He was. He, he was, was Chubbs. He was Chubbs. Yeah. He was the guy yeah. with the fake with the hand that yeah, got fake head with the alligator. Yeah. Basically. And then he finally died at the end. Yeah, he? he died because uh in yeah. <laughs> it's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. He's like, come on, you gotta work it out, baby. <laughs> just tap it in. <laughs> Give it a tap. Oh, tap man. Man. oh yeah, R. that R. was a dude. classic R. growing up. Yeah, yeah wow. dude. So he definitely it was one of my favorites. Dude, it's uh, definitely, yeah, definitely a classic. Good moments, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, he passed away in his sleep. Age seventy six years old, dude. He passed away peacefully in his sleep. Just that's they didn't wake up and best you know way to go. What's really wild? Did everyone else in the car die? Was <laughs> everyone else screaming? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so I don't old. think it was that chaotic at all. He was so old when he was in Billy Madison, or not Billy Madison. Got a Happy Gilmore. Yeah, that's Happy Gilmore. Um, that I didn't even realize he was Cre Apollo Apollo uh, Creed. I didn't even realize that until like the other day. Oh really? I even... a, you know, it's super wild. Like he's because he's like sixty five in in Happy Gilmore. And he's an old man, right? Yeah. But then in Rocky, Apollo Creed. Oh, yes. I had no idea. Yes, That's it. Not until one, just now. The one who Drago kills. Yeah, kills yeah. And then Rocky goes on like a revenge thing. Yeah. yeah. That's oh. him. I didn't. I honestly did not realize it. Really? He's wow. only like 25 well, in that movie. Yeah. I was just like a little kid. So, and I, you know, I didn't get into all that after yeah. that, you yeah. know? 
Yeah, wow. Man. Yeah, he was Crazy, also right? he was also, my mind. Yeah, yeah, he was also in a lot of new things. He was in the Mandalorian, so he was doing a lot of like yes, uh recent was, stuff, you know. So um it's it's unfortunate, you know. I mean, 76, oh man. The, yeah. the dude looked like he took care of himself too. He was like in good health and everything. Up, yeah. Even at his at his younger age, he was pretty ripped, dude. He was like stacked. And also, he was a football player. Do you know that, right? Did he, not know that either. He played for the I believe, I'm not sure. You can look this up, but he played for the Raiders. He was a linebacker. I believe so. So he was a pretty fit, pretty athletic. He was also in the Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Damn. Yep. Dude. Yeah, dude. So he was at a pretty prominent acting career. And uh, I mean, he was well known. And uh, his biggest break was obviously when he played Apollo Creed in Rocky. So uh, he definitely, you know, cemented himself in just uh, movie history and just being a well known actor. And I want to say he lived around this area too. He was around from Washington oh, State, I believe, because I would see him on a bunch of uh, Comic Cons. He would show up. And it sucks because I did want to go and uh, get like an Apollo Creed uh, Funko. And I wanted to get a sign and i was like man it, I, that was like i'm on to do list thinking like if he ever does come i'm definitely gonna do that yeah. but unfortunately that's not gonna happen now you know what i'm saying so wow. i'm taking a yeah. look at his um at his uh fil his uh what, what would you call it his List filmography idmb yeah dude IBDMB it's wild or whatever <laughs> let's look at this let's look at the yeah. the work that he's done definitely this let's uh revisit some of his projects okay so, let's go we're looking at this okay. right here so Toy Story. He's oh, he's a Toy Story Four. Yeah, okay, this is just like kind of, I guess, recently. Yeah, I, I 2019. Guess. These are starring though, also. So okay. I mean, all. Dang. So yeah. he has more than. Yeah. So okay. There you go. Uh, Happy Gilmore, obviously. Little Nicky. Yeah. But Predator. He was, Predator. He was big, so you can see Rocky right there. Yeah. Right yeah. Off to the right. But, I mean, he was really big. He was in pretty much all of them. Wow, he was a young buck in 85, yeah. huh? Yeah, man, Clint 73. East, he was in a Clint Eastwood movie to start. Do you see that? Yeah, that oh, there it is. Magnum yeah. Force. Wait, wait, right. go to Pam Greer, F Friday Foster. Is that Pam Greer? I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. Molly Fox, though. Tripping. Close Encounters. He was in Close Oh, he was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Or the Fifth Kind, whatever it's called? That's Tom crazy. Fancy. I know that. Uh, Balto. Predator. Yeah, he was in Predator, too, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, happy, obviously Happy Gilmore, <laughs> little Nicky, Eight yeah, Crazy Nights, dude. That's that. Do you guys remember? I was. I don't remember about that. I never watched it. We were talking about Christmas uh, stuff, and we and this. I was trying to remember what it was called, and it's called Eight Crazy Nights. Oh, right. And it, I didn't even and know. It's, yeah, it's Adam Sandler and like all of his buddies and stuff, and they're it's all an animated thing, and it's super like dirty and like <laughs> it's like rated R, you know. Oh, like, really? Yeah, it's super funny, dude. You should you should definitely watch. That's it. one thing cool about since we're talking about Adam Sandler yeah. that he does, he has a bunch of his homies that star in his own movies. Yeah. Like he has no production like film yeah. and all that, and he just keeps it in house, so yep. all the money stays within the crew. And I respect for him, man. He does yeah. that. He, he does that for his friends, you know. And all that, so uh, kudos to him for doing that. Yeah, have you? Uh, he's come here before for comedy uh, stand ups. Have you guys seen him in like live uh, comedy wise? All right, we're back in action. We had to make sure that there's no intruders there coming go. to the La Casa, the studio. We're about to pull in the, the nine mil killing, take care of business here. So, <laughs> but we're good, we're good. Everybody's everybody's good, yeah. But, anyways, as we were, conversation Carl Weathers, RIP, involved in a lot of movies, and you know, we lost the legend. But nonetheless, Adam Sandler, you were telling us about a little. Uh, pre <laughs> you, you actually let us hear a little bit of what you were referring to. <laughs> Which is pretty. Uh, I wish we could put this stuff on the pod. This yeah. would make for some good content. But of course, you know, you got to keep it PG 13 at least minimum, you know. So, what were you saying about Adam Sandler, though? Well, I mean, we were before recording today, we were talking about, you know, we've got this. TV in front of us, yeah. and we were talking about what what material we want to put on there, you know. And anyway, the conversation just reminded me of an old CD I used to listen to when I, when I, when I was a, a teenager. A lad, and a young I lad. I think I was probably like you know thirteen when yeah. I heard it. It was nineteen ninety six when it was released. It was two was uh, alive. And uh, but Adam Sandler, I don't know. Did you guys know that he used to put out like these albums? I never knew that. No, yeah. I never knew that. Oh yeah. And so yeah. you knew that? Oh yeah. The Hanukkah Christmas. There's the, that, but yeah. he they were like skits throughout the whole thing. So oh. you'd be listening to it, and he'd just do like an hour and a half, or just a, over an hour of just skits. Yeah. And so the skit I was just playing for you guys off the air was on his album. What the hell happened to me? And the uh, the the 
skit was called Sex or Weightlifting. <laughs> and, and basically he plays this character, Barry Lincoln, where yeah. he's going around on the street and he's saying, hey, I, I, I recorded people, you know, doing the deed. Or And then I also recorded a bunch of people uh, at the gym. And, and I would like you to tell me the difference. Yeah. So when these people are listening to it, you know, they're obviously doing the deed. Yeah. And so they're like, you know, it, 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 and he would say, hey, what are they doing? He's like they're <laughs> they're doing the deed. He's like no, no, they're you know doing a, a butterfly, butterfly curl. curl. <laughs> yeah, military press. Pretty yeah. intense, bro. Was he the first one to ever do some stuff like some like Was he the first one to do content like that back in the days? Well, I, or was there, back in the day they used to have like Richard Pryor yeah. and Bill Cosby. They would put all of their material on record, record. Oh, okay. And then, um, and they would play it like that. So people could, you know, they wanted to get some Bill Cosby, early Bill Cosby, mm -hmm. early R Richard Pryor stuff. Boom. They would, they would hide that record. They would buy that record and hide it and then play it when their parents weren't around. Dang. Yeah. So then. Okay. So interesting. Cause uh, like a lot of the times, I mean, especially now you see a lot of specials now, like on Netflix, HBO and all that stuff, or even on YouTube, it just seems obviously with the way we consume content, you can pretty much upload it anywhere. Right. Yeah. But back then, obviously you said in records, CDs or some might be like on, on TV, uh, live, whatever, but it's crazy to see the evolution in that. But that's crazy. I did not know that about Adam Sandler that he used to do that, put it on disc and all that stuff. Yeah. Dude. That's crazy. Yeah. One of those days you get bored, go ahead and throw that on there. I think you like yeah. it. He had another one with the goat. And there was this, yeah, they, he, the character was this goat that could talk. And then uh, he, his owner was this drunk alcoholic that would beat the hell out of him. And then he'd get off of his chain every now and then and then talk to these other, like, you know, Californian or whatever, like younger, uh, like surfer guys or whatever. They're like, hey, goat, how's it going, bro? And he's like, oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh I, got a, I got an ass kicking last night. Oh, you know? <laughs> he used to do prank calls, too. I don't know if you guys remember no. back, like, in the last. LimeWire Kaza days. Okay, LimeWire, like, I remember like, those days, yeah. Uh, there were these guys uh, that would do prank calls, right? And I honestly, I can't, I, think, I can't remember who they were. I think they're called the Jerky Boys. That's what they were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember the do Jerky Boys. They, used, they literally had an album. Yeah, the Jerky prank, Boys did. Prank phone calls. Yep. And uh, God, that is 90s stuff Adam all the way. Sandler does, a, does okay. a famous one where it's, uh, you kicked my, no, that's Tom Green. You kicked my dog. But Adam Sandler, Adam oh, Sandler, Tom Green, yeah, Tom oh, Green dude, was in yeah. back, he does the Middle Eastern accent, and he's like, "You came over today, and you kicked my dog." Uh, see, neighbor. you can't get away with that today. Yeah. you can't get away yeah, with that. All due respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, for sure, for sure. of course, yeah. But <laughs> that's fucking hilarious, but, uh, dude. Yeah, they used that was an era. Sure. Dude, that was man. How Tom Green. That was another one where yeah. he had his own show on MTV and yep. just him doing his own thing. He was hilarious. I found him to be like, super hilarious, dude. He ate pennies one time. That, <laughs> really? He like just took a jar of pennies and he like sucked on them and was like. <laughs> stuff in there, it, oh, dude. Tom Green. He was an influence of me. Like he had this little <laughs> dance that he does where he just doesn't even dance. He just moves in this awkward position. <laughs> and I do that all the time today. <laughs> like I just did it yesterday. I mean, he was <laughs> super famous at one time. He had his own show on MTV. MTV yeah. And then, do you remember he had a Tom Green a, show? A star a star movie role too. It was called like Road Trip. Yeah, Road yeah. Trip. And he was yeah. like the main guy, basically. Yep, he was. Yeah, so it was like back <laughs> that then. That was well, a funny movie. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't seen it since I was like 14, honestly. I, <laughs> it was hilarious. He, he, it was cool because I remember he went after the MTV days. He still wanted to do his own show. And he had his own house. And, and so he bought a house in California and turned it into a studio and would bring people, celebrities in. And he would have like his own like nighttime show. You know, oh, wow. cool. and and so he did that for a while. And w here's the crazy thing: Joe Rogan saw that and was influenced by that. Oh, really? Cool. And started doing his own wow. podcast, and now Joe Rogan experience as it is today was based on the influence of the Tom, Tom Green, Green cool. show. I did see that show. Tom Green is actually doing a thing where he's actually living in like in this. Uh, like this mobile home, like, or like in his like van. An RV. Yeah. And he does podcasting yes. or he does things now. So he's doing yeah. that, which is, I find that pretty cool. Uh, very interesting character, man. Very interesting character for sure. Uh, you know, super funny. So he was definitely growing up as a kid. I used to watch him too on MTV yep. and him doing this, uh, just like just random stuff he did and all that. I remember the time where he lost one of his testicles. He had a testicle cancer. Oh, yeah. and he had to get removed. Yeah. He so, was dating Drew Barrymore at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was crazy. But yeah, damn, he played it. Hey, Drew. 
he was with Drew Barrymore. Yeah, you didn't know I that. Think it was, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's pretty weird too. She's but. a little bit out there, yeah. but <laughs> but I think he's yeah. more down to earth. Oh, I, I think she's out there. Yeah, but I think he's down to earth. Like at that time, he was just doing them. He used to be a rapper too. Yeah, <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. My, wow. my bum is on the moose. Yeah, my bum is on the moose. That's why Eminem <laughs> took influence from that too, right? Yeah, he like this him or something like that. Or yeah, no. my bum is on your lip. Yeah, my bum is on your lip. He took that from him. Yeah. <laughs> Putting on TV. Dang, dude, we're going back Deliver on a freaking... Deliver to little kids. I know, we're going in the way back machine. Dude, that's huh? insane, though, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, yeah. though. That's but all crazy. because of Carl Weathers. See? Carl it's Weathers, like, man. <laughs> Carl, wow. He, he went... He, back. Like, we literally grew up, and yeah. he watched us all grow up. You that's know, he amazing. Made, he made his exit, man. So fortunate yeah. again. R.I.P. to him, man. Uh. It sucks. It truly sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but unless... Uh, what do you got today on the Jennifer to us, uh, uh, Brett, there? You, I, well, see, I see some papers on there. You're yeah, ready to roll on this. I just got a few. We're, we're just going to... I'll make it quick. Okay. This isn't... Uh, the topic I wanted to talk about, but it's the topic I have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, as everybody knows, I got diagnosed with sleep apnea, and I it was a hell of a battle. Our healthcare system in America sucks, <laughs> sucks. I mean, I'm surprised I've even I'm even alive today. <laughs> but yeah. I had to take Straight I had to up. take matters into my own hands. I had to take health in my own hands because the doctors had failed me, the system had failed me, and I was just like. I got to do this right. And so I had to do a lot of dietary mm -hmm. uh, adjustments and, you know, a number of things. And so uh, in that, I still, you know, sleep apnea, what happens? So sleep apnea is, uh, it's where uh, you, uh, <laughs> probably should have hide on those cards. Uh, yeah. To be continued, we can insert the <laughs> countdown. The basically, nine, it's where you're, where you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> We're <laughs> done. <laughs> and on to the next topic. <laughs> but he didn't completely sleep. cut you off. He didn't sleep much last night. <laughs> no, no, I did. It's it's okay. So basically, what sleep apnea is, I was trying to find um, what it is. It's so basically, when a person, when when I'm when I'm sleeping, my muscles completely collapse on my air waves. Okay. And so what happens is I'm, I'm getting, I'm not getting any air until all of a sudden I take this. Ooh, right. And this damn. is what my wife has seen for the last two years. <laughs> and like, there are times where she's wanted to like poke me to make sure I'm still alive, but we have really good life insurance, so she just lets me go. <laughs> <laughs> Two point five on the table. When he dies, yeah. I'm getting that check. He pays extra. <laughs> so she presses down more. Yeah, on she's you. like, she's like, Let's just leave the room for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Pillow on top. Come back in. <laughs> just to just. Dude, to make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> I was watching this video. I'll tell you about this after. <laughs> but about this this lady that was trying to kill her husband for his life insurance. Shit. But anyway, so so I finally I get you know I've been dealing with it for two years and I finally just took action um, last July. Yeah, and then they finally finally got me my machine. So you know I'm first night I'm using the machine and I'm like. Oh man, this is what it feels like to get a full night's sleep. So I wake up. I actually woke up an hour before I had to wake up, and yeah. I'm like, "What is? What do I do with all this energy?" <laughs> you know. You so I just good? went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Yeah. So, so the difference in how you feel, like, did you feel like more rejuvenated? Like you actually had a bunch of more energy. I'm, I'm only two before? days into the game, okay. But I mean, I will say, just two days using it, I'm good. Yeah. I feel good, and and so awesome. the main things that was happening was. Um, so, you know, my, my air, I wouldn't get any air. And so you're talking about cutting oxygen from your brain for like a full minute. Sometimes I would just not breathe. And, uh, and so what I would wake up with these migraines that would hurt. And that's all I'm doing is killing my brain cells, you know, <laughs> and, and it's just because you're killing your brain, you're, you're cutting the oxygen from your brain. And so, and then it leads to other problems like dementia, Alzheimer's. Oh, wow. Um, and then the main reason I went in for it, it was my heart and, and I noticed on steadily my heart, my blood pressure continued to rise every visit. I was going, oh man, it's going higher. It's going higher. So I'm like, shit, this apnea, I better take care of it. I'm sure it's the apnea. And so, because you're, when you're not breathing, you're putting all this strain on your heart. Your heart's like, dude, force this guy to breathe. Right. <laughs> 
and then you do it for another. So That's my crazy, yeah, my apneas. I was getting sixty-seven apneas an hour, which is like <laughs> really bad, like really bad. So what that can lead to is stroke. So I could like literally die in my sleep and not even know. Oh, yeah, it's know? pretty. Yeah, it's pretty serious, man. So it's bad, and so so I sleep with my first night, and then I get onto X, and the first article. That I, that pops into my thing is Sheriff, 62, from Louisiana, claims sleep apnea mask he used for four years gave him kidney cancer as FDA reveals nearly 600 deaths links to Philips CPAP devices. That's the first thing I read. Yeah. And I'm doing this thing to save my life. And the first thing I th see is these devices are killing people. Is that the one you're using? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I really don't know. Okay. I, I even this. asked you that. Like, is that the one you had? <laughs> I need to find out. So, so basically what was, was happening was this sheriff, he was using this CPAP machine and he would find these tiny black articles, uh, particles in his pillow left behind by the machine. And it wasn't until this recall in 2021 that he learned that those particles were, were bad news. What they were, um, he was rushed in, so a month before the recall, he was rushed into the emergency surgery after a routine doctor visit where they found out he had liver cancer. He had to underco underco undergo surgery. They had to remove his right kidney, according to ProPublica. Wow, that's and insane. And so, you know, so he went into remission, but uh, nearly 600 people who used the now recalled CPAP machines have died in the last three years of illnesses wow. linked to foam and potentially toxic gases that blow into users' airways while they use the device. And and what it is, it's uh, um, uh, Philips has pulled millions of faulty sleep apnea ventilators from the market amid an ever-growing mountain of cases in which long-time users have been diagnosed with cancers, pneumonia, asthma and other severe health problems that's insane dude i'm surprised a company like that like if you know it's killed a, like a good amount of people why wouldn't they shut the place down or that department at least you know because Philips is a pretty big company as you granted i used to work for Philips too there's uh, a Philips. yeah, yeah I, used right to work there. The I used to work there well that way yeah uh, yeah. yeah they make their uh, ultrasounds there for uh um, you know pregnant women to oh, their babies okay. all that so yeah um pretty pretty cool company in that aspect in that in that right. field was pretty cool so uh, for anybody who was using it the reason what it came down to is uh, the problem stems from the type of foam used in the headgear of the machine. Mm. It is affixed around the head and connected to the snorkel-like device, which I still need to give you a picture. <laughs> it looks pretty dope. <laughs> I got to shave my beard because uh, it lets out too much air. It doesn't it get a good All good seal? grass around, yeah, yeah, So yeah. I do have to get rid of that, unfortunately, but... Uh, you know, but the foam, life or beard. <laughs> the foam was made with polyester-based polyurethane, Ooh. has been shown to degrade and break off into tiny particles and release harmful <laughs> chemical gases such as formaldehyde, benzene, methylene, chloride, volatile organic compounds and solvents, all of which have been linked to different types of cancers and respiratory problems. That's wild. Yikes. So basically, you know... You use this thing to save your life. People are using this. And this is why, you know, I have this huge problem with uh, with big pharma as it is. And, you know, just while we're on the topic of big pharma and hating it, I wrote I watched a really good uh, interview on Tucker Carlson. If you go to Tucker Carlson YouTube page, mm -hmm. um, the title of it is called Big Pharma is Fooling You Again. There is a guy that gets on there and talks about the fact that so many Americans are on medicine and they're trying to get like teens on this medicine and they hook them for life. And what happens is everything is in silos like, oh, you've got diabetes, uh, take this. You've got high blood pressure, you take this. You've got high cholesterol, you take this. But we're taking all of them all at once and it's making us sicker and sicker and sicker. And so the one time I trust pharma... Big Pharma, it's because I'm relying on it, then I get that article. That's and insane. I'm like, I'm not even safe. Yeah, right? That is insane. But don't you ever wonder, like, there's there's obviously, let's go into conspiracy mode here with the tinfoil hats. So, like, I've, I've always just heard different perspectives from people saying that how, like, the food that we eat 
super processed. There's a lot of chemicals yes. in there that we don't know what they really are. We don't want to take the time to really look in the back and say the ingredients, this is what it has. And all that stuff, you know, it affects us as humans, right? So it benefits pharma in that way because you might have diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, just... Uh, They're all in your food. Exactly. So it's like a cycle, right? Yep. Bad food, meaning bad health, big pharma wins. Now you're hooked on for life and it's just a repetitive cycle. It's like you know, something so they like 75% like of the food that we eat is processed and has a bunch of ingredients that are illegal yeah. in Europe. And even like in Germany, Europe they, won't even put them in the food. Wasn't it? You no, know, Europe, you're right. They actually, um, they, they, you can't get a uh, Trix, um, Trix cereal over there. It's banned. Like some of the, cause they have like an ingredient there that yeah. they say it's like harmful. So their scientists it. are like, yeah. uh, this is going to kill our population. You know, American scientists are like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's good to go. Dude. We'll give them medicine. Yeah. So why don't you think like um why is it that um people don't in your opinion, why don't you think people go like the more um how do they say what's the other one? It's like not um pharmaceutical but um homeopathic. Homeopathic. Why don't you think we go That's that? That's what route? I do. Okay. That's what I do. So everything I take for my uric acid, my blood pressure, all that, it's all just natural stuff. The reason why, it's because mm -hmm. it's all from the earth. It's all stuff mm -hmm. from the earth, like beets. Uh, garlic, celery, green tea, coffee, all of those have, you know, you're looking for antioxidants. You're looking for things that are going to uh, like cayenne is really good. Mm -hmm. if, like if you're sick, um, the cayenne peppers are like one of the best things you can do. And, uh, and so, you know, I have a number of books on it, but now as I'm getting older, it's like, I'm starting to see the importance of it, but you, it's stuff that you really have to start earlier. You yeah. have to start earlier. By the time you're already dealing with this stuff, it's a little bit too late, mm. but it's still never too late to correct everything. And in fact, before two weeks before I started my CPAP machine, uh, I've been losing, I've been losing weight, cleaning up my diet, yeah. drinking only water, all that. Uh, my wife has noticed, she goes, you haven't been uh, snoring at night, you know, but I'm still getting the apneas because, you know, that's still muscles collapsing. But, yeah. but it, you know, the more uh, weight you lose, the the better off you are. Anyway, oh, for sure. When it for comes sure. To that, so. I think that's just, it, dude, overall sleep is super important. You need your sleep. You just can't be running like on an hour, two hours. Like I, like I told you before, I would see you. I could tell in your eyes, bro, you're super drained. No <coughs> energy. You're running on fumes, energy drinks, and all and, that's like, and a, and that's, it, yeah, it's crazy. I think the energy drinks were the uh, reason I had the gout because yeah. right? all the chemicals and all that, it was just producing so uh, an overflow, an yeah. overabundance of uric acid. My, my, my kidneys couldn't keep up with it. They were like, like, oh, let's just let that go in the bloodstream and <laughs> go where it may. And then it ended up in my big toe and it creates, it's basically creates arthritis. And oh, wow. so, yeah, it's like for life now, but uh, it just creates these sharp crystals and that are like sharp as glass and it's cutting. And that's where you get the inflammation and that instant pain. And, uh, and so that, you know, you have to cut that uric acid down. And uh, otherwise, you know, you're just a walking thing. And they have medicine for uric acid. Like they have um, medicine where you can, um, it will make you pee out some of that extra yeah. uric acid and all that. But uh, but I still, you know, for me, I there's nothing better than just keeping everything uh, organic, keeping everything as close to the earth as you can and getting away from all this processed stuff because it literally is killing us in that article or that video I just recommended from that Tucker Carlson uh, show. The guy that he has on there drops game on talking about the health of Americans and why it, it almost looks deliberate yeah. because there's just a lot of money being exchanged. Oh, for sure. It's all about money, dude. They, they want everything tied into where it's, I was going to benefit them at the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With all these food companies, processing food companies, whatever, uh, just uh, pharma in general. It's, pharma's a huge, you know, what is a business, bro? I mean, think about all the money. Billions. We're talking and about billions, not fucking millions or anything like that. I'm just curious, how many energy drinks were you drinking? Like oh, dude, I would, like, so like three or four, three or four. Okay, three or wow. four. I only drink yeah. one a day. That's it, dude. That's nah, my yeah, yeah. There was no moderation. I, I drink like one or two of those every day. Mm -hmm. the Celsius. Okay. So I know, I know they're a little more natural. Yeah, those. they are. I mean, they're the better option yeah. compared to like Monster, so that's, Rockstar, and all I that. I drink two of those usually every day. But yeah. uh, I think the biggest thing with those is as long as you're drinking water, oh, yeah. right? Give yeah. your liver a chance. Yeah, for sure. And then <laughs> just drink as much water as you can after you've had one of those. Chance. But, you know, really, uh, for me, for gout, uh, coffee is super friendly to gout. Nice. So I can drink. You know, a cup of coffee and all that. And I'm, you know, getting used to, you know, it's like a, a, like a drug addict, right? I was addicted to caffeine uh, my whole life or, you know, ever since I got out of school. 
and work and work and work. And I'd always work odd hours and, you know, whether it was overnight or early in the morning. And I just always had a reason to drink caffeine. And I just love that. I could sleep for one hour, two hours a night, and then know that Monster had my back. <laughs> Red Bull <laughs> just was slap it down. Really yeah. it into a monster. But it was slowly <laughs> killing me. Yeah, it was slowly, yeah. slowly going to kill you. Are you guys a fan of matcha? Matcha? Like matcha tea and all that? I like the taste. No? I, I think I've tried it, but yeah. yeah it, it's supposed to be better than, like, uh, what is it, coffee and all that. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, like that's a better alternative. But yeah, man, that's crazy. Didn't you say you passed out one time because you had too many like caffeine? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. You what told me about that. I'm like, are you years serious? Ago. Yeah. So um, a few years back, um, I basically, long story short, I had a I had a long day, and woke up, had pre workout before I went to the gym, had coffee when I left, took a nap, didn't eat anything, woke oh. up, and this is during COVID when the water fountains were shut off at the gym. So they wouldn't even. You, they you'd shut have to the show water up, down. You'd have to show up with water, and they at the Linwood, at the Linwood. God, they took that yeah. too far. So uh, I I would have normally drank like two three bottles yeah, while yeah. I was there because I chug water while I'm working out, but yeah. there just wasn't any water. So I ended up getting tired going home, you know, whatever, falling asleep because caffeine doesn't really super affect me. Got up, went to go to dinner, had it didn't really think of my consumption of caffeine that day, right? Yeah. I just took a nap. So I'm like, open up the uh, fridge, take out a Rockstar, drink that, drive 15 minutes to go uh, <laughs> get some pizza. And I remember feeling fine, like just sitting down and order, we ordered a beer and the beer came and I just all of a sudden started feeling kind of lightheaded. It just ended up leaning forward. I was like, oh, I was like, I don't feel any good. Can I get some water? Yeah. And then I just woke up on the floor. No way. Yeah. And uh, the ambulance came and everything. And they, Whoa. Hooked, they hooked me up in the, uh, yeah. Cause, what was that bill? Did they bill you like 5000 No, 5, it, was, it was free. Oh. Because I, I didn't get in. America. <laughs> they, want, they, they offered to take me, but I didn't, I didn't get in the, I, yeah. knew, how, I knew how it worked. Oh, it was going to be expensive. You know? Yeah, yeah and they told it, me that was crazy, man. No, he passed it, out. Like he just, just yeah, they it turned out being uh they were worried about they were worried about something and then basically I ended up being fine. Like I got tested a little bit. Uh they were worried about I forget what it was. They were worried about something, but they You had a heart attack, bro. Right? <laughs> wow. But I hit, I had a big old knot on my eye. Cause you fell. Yeah, I hit my head like right on the oh. right on the corner and I still have a bump right here where i hit it well dude there was a time where you know i won't name his name but oh uh, yes yes similar it, thing it right? was it, it was yeah it was the you know we're we're all, we're on the trail you know doing a doing a walk and talk or whatever and so we're walking we're walking and then we get back to our cars and he's you know standing by his pickup and all of a sudden, like we're we're having this conversation like right now, right? And then all of a sudden he just stops and then he just has this blank stare. And I'm like, I thought just he thought of something else, you know, yeah. and then but he just like and then he just fell. And I like caught him. I caught him so he wouldn't fall. And then I just let him down in the truck bed. And then I'm like, oh, oh this looks super weird because like, you know, there's a busy <laughs> People parking lot. Around. People are thinking I'm gonna rob him. So I reach in his pocket. And I grab his phone and I'm looking for someone to call, you know, and I'm looking for like why for whatever. Right. And, and, uh, and so I'm looking and then all of a sudden he starts to come to and I go, hey, man. And he's like looking at me and I have his phone <laughs> and I go, you're trying to mug me. I go, bro, <laughs> you just passed out. Like and I'm, I was looking for your wife to call and, you know, see what I need to do. But uh, he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be okay, you know, and he, but it was something that had happened and that wasn't the first time he did that either. And he was doing like this intermittent fasting where <laughs> he wouldn't eat and, oh, and he wow. was just like basically starving himself. And so he went to take a piss one time. And so he, well, like in the middle of pissing, it like released everything. And then he just passed out. He fell over. And he would have conked his head pretty good, but the uh, shower curtain <laughs> saved him. And so he just fell into the shower curtain and it became a cradle for him. And then he had piss everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you met him. I know. I think you know who you're talking about. Yeah. We'll tell you off air, but yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's uh, Yeah. There's, there's something <laughs> Shit, going on with that, man. Like, if he passed out like that with you when you guys went on the trail, yeah. it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, man. It's pretty surreal, but. Yeah. I was worried to let him go home. I'm like, dude, do you want me to, like, follow you home? You know, like he'd been drinking all night. <laughs> You're like, no, I'll He's be pretty okay. hungover. That's what it was. He was pretty just wasted. You know? <laughs> Insane. No, so, moral of the story, people, definitely check up on yourselves. You don't feel good. You know, you have a daily checkups go uh just make sure everything's running smoothly in your uh you know like uh like ice cube said check yourself before, before you, you wreck, wreck yourself. exactly words of the wise <laughs> words of the, trying to get on the pod you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Molly, yeah. Our everybody our shout our out to yeah. molly yeah, yeah. Our 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 been the the beyond too, expectation too, too. mascot yeah. Yeah, that's what i said the mascot yeah. right yeah. we need to get her like a little bandana i think i heard that yeah. on the last episode yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely we need to get her a little mic and uh some headphones too so she can join us exactly just heavily breathing that's it so, boys, I mean, uh, do you want to talk a little sports? There's there's some stuff going on that I want to get your perspective on. Well, we got the Super Bowl coming up. Too. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But that's okay. So, for okay. <laughs> Let's talk about just obviously since we're locals, Seattle Seahawks, we got a new head coach. Now, I want to get your, your point of view from it. I think you know too, right? I know. Yeah. So, we actually, bit. it's official that we have Baltimore Ravens defensive coach, right? Coordinator yep. Yep. as coordinator. our head coach. Now, officially. So, yeah, he's going to be running the ship. For the Seahawks now, youngest also coach in uh, the whole league right now, right? He is 36 wow. years old. Yep. 36 years old. Yep, Mike McDonald. Yes. So let's, let's talk Let's talk about that a little bit. So now, okay. he was leading the number one defense in the league as of this year, right? He right. was running Baltimore Ravens defense was number one. Um, what do we think about that? Good or bad? Great. Great? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was a lot of people's... Uh, like Prospect. top candidate uh. and i think he actually like turned away interviews like from other teams and like Whew. seemed like he mm. kind of was knew he, where he was going what do you um, think that is though uh why yeah like why did he money he baby yeah. is it the money well, no, or the money would have been the same everywhere pretty oh. much it would have been pretty much the same okay yeah because most of the new coaches are pretty similar unless they're like super tenured or coming off a super bowl win mm, or something, like like that. something on their resume it's yeah, usually yeah. around 10 million That's so usually so what the, what do you what so this guy Seattle apart well i think he just likes the winning culture that we've had because if you really look at the nfl i think it's like over the last uh or say the nfc over the last 10 years might even be the nfl i'll have to check that mm -hmm. we're the most we have the best record in the regular season wow Okay. Well, over the last last ten years, yeah. Did you get Legion of Boom vibes when, like, when we when, when we got him? Well, or because I mean, our whole defense, you know, back when yeah. we had, uh, well, Chance Marshall Lynch, 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 yeah, on the other side, uh, Thomas, 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 Sherman, Sherman, all, all that, yeah. Legion of Boom. I, that's what took us to the Super Bowl, right? right? And that so when I saw him, I'm like. I was getting Legion of Boom vibes. Yeah. Like, well, oh yeah. man, maybe we can, maybe we have another shot. Well, to me, uh, like Legion of Boom is never going to happen again. Like that's probably never going to, you're probably never going to have that, like that caliber, talent, yeah. like all together <sighs> with like, my with heart. Coaching. but, but you'll see like possibly a different version of that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's the, the great thing that, it, you know, with, with this guy, uh, McDonald is he, not only does he like, make good calls and set up the defense like to where they can understand things yeah but he also is is like really great at disguising things mm. so it confuses the offense nice. right so it's more like there's a lot of movement so like if you, if you watch some of these uh teams like the miami dolphins and the rams and uh even detroit um and you know what pre pre-snap on offense they have a lot of movement you know what i mean there's guys moving going in motion mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of play action stuff yeah. like that. What we're getting from him is the defensive version of that. Yeah, he's tricky, right? Like, so he makes things look. Quarterback is trained. Every quarterback is trained similarly to read defenses. Like pre-snap, they walk up. Mahomes looks around. Oh, okay, the the pressure's over here. Hey, hey, guys, blue forty-two, blue forty-two, move right, shift right. You know whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like th that's their job is to do that, right? He makes it really hard on them to do that. Mm. So, okay, so, okay, now you're peaking my interest. So, so now we're we're talking like stunts. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, a stunt would be where let's say defensive linemen they have their hands on the ground, right? Yep. Instead of just snap, hike, and run forward and try to push the guy, they're switching positions. 
they're like pulling around to the far corner. So mm-hmm. like the DN will actually like on the left side, let's say I'm fa- on the left side facing the offensive line, he'll actually stand up and sprint around the other guy and try to like, tr- right. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and then they'll send a blitz like in a, in a, maybe a different direction. Yeah. So it, it, it just creates confusion. Right. And that's what the Ravens were so good at <sighs> up until playing. And even honestly, dude, like the, I, I believe they only lost by like a touchdown. Or they might have lost by like ten points or something, but mm-hmm. they only gave up like sixteen points, mm. even to Mahomes. You yeah, know? yeah. Like it wasn't. It was not yeah. the defense's fault. Yeah. Like, and to me, so a lot of people, you know, made comments about that Cowboys game, right? That first playoff game, they just got just destroyed by Green Bay, right? Like destroyed. They got embarrassed, <laughs> and and <laughs> so right after that, everyone because we the Seattle wanted uh, Dan Quinn. Yeah, initially. yeah, that was one. Of Everybody the... was all excited about it because speaking of Lob, he was the original coach. Oh yeah, he was the defensive yeah. Yeah, coordinator. I remember that when mm-hmm. they became the the Legion of Boom. Yeah. Well, they go out. It's funny how everything is. What What have you done for me lately? Right? Because he goes out from being the league candidate, goes out and they get destroyed. But uh, was it Detroit? Detroit. No, 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 because Detroit played Green Bay. Yeah. Right, right. So, so anyway, but, um, and I could be wrong about that too, because I'm just like sitting here rattling. But um, he went from being leading candidate of the Seahawks to being like, they did, they like snubbed him and like didn't want to talk to him anymore. Yeah, that was they, originally the, the one that we thought we were talking about how they were going to yeah, get him. Just because their defense yeah. got so smoked. Like they were the favorites in that game and their defense just got destroyed. Like that was why they lost. So then the Seahawks were like, eh. We're gonna wait for McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go to our plan action. Yeah. Easy, yeah. Easy, easy and, they, and they risked losing him. Yeah. Think about it. Like, cause they had to wait until the Ravens, because they could have gone all the way to the Super Bowl. If they yep. would just won the yeah. last game, True. they wouldn't even be playing till next week. And right. apparently the Seahawks were willing to wait. That's how yeah, much that's, they that's what I saw too. They were, they were really willing up. to wait until no one was left to try to get him. So that said a lot, I think. That's and, cool. And, and, you know, so. and I think that's going to make it exciting watching <laughs> yeah. those games. He's already so, making additions to his staff. Just this morning, they hired a uh, defensive coordinator. Okay. Well, assistant head coach. Yeah, I saw that. Assistant, assistant head, coach. head coach. He's from uh, he was the defensive Michigan, coordinator, right? Defensive coordinator for Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo. Was it Michigan? No, but I saw something about Michigan. Or no. I'm talking about Jim Harbaugh. He's oh, going Jim to go. Harbaugh. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, my bad. That's a different thing. Yeah, too. and he he that's a whole other topic. Yeah. That that lunatic. He he just <laughs> Not lunatic. He just he just guaranteed multiple championships to uh the so Chargers. He pulled a he pulled a LeBron when he showed up to Miami. Yeah. Not one, not two, not three, not four. Oh. Do you remember that when they did that? So no. so way back in the day, the the reference I'm making, by the way, people for all for all of our babies out there that are watching for you the know, baby. 15 year olds that are watching. Babies. Yeah, you know. Um basically LeBron had the press run when all th- when Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch and him, who were like three of the biggest stars at the time, mm. they all joined up on the same team and they had a rally for the fans, right? And and they're interviewed, they gave the guys all a chance with the mic, right? And and LeBron goes, I he's like, We gonna win a lot of championships. He goes, Not one, not two, <laughs> not three, not four, not five. <laughs> right? And they ended up winning Two I want to say two. Was two. Yeah, yeah, it was two. It was two. And thank God for Ray Allen. <laughs> it's not even. He had a buzzer. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, they were up three two, and he had a like LeBron shot it like to tie it up, and he missed it. Oh. And they were down. The Spurs were winning three two, so all they needed to finish the game. Yeah, they won the championship. The ball like flies into the corner. Ray Allen like does some ungodly thing. Yeah, where he, where he steps his feet back. Old Sonic, by the way, yeah. steps his feet back and like fades in, but keeps his feet behind the line. Sinks a three to tie it up. Woo! They won in overtime and then won game seven. And that wow. was one of the championships. And Ray Allen, if he wasn't there, lucky. they would have lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn, so, yeah, I don't know how funny. we got off on a tangent on Ray Allen. <laughs> it's all about, hey, this, is, this is the beauty of the yeah. podcast, bro. Yeah. Okay, so we expect him to make some good adjustments in regards oh, yeah. to the team. And uh, we're going to see a – would you say – would it be fair to say we're going to see a completely different team next year? I Okay, I, I hate to get my hopes up. But okay. Like, but no, like, let's talk. Well, I'd love to get my hopes up. Yeah. But, but – um, I think that we're going to be a top 10 defense next year. Okay, like okay. We're, we're going from being like one of the worst, like 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think we're going to have one of the best. Okay. Because we have a lot of talent. Yeah. Like we, we do have a lot of talent, right? I yeah. Mean, we got Witherspoon on, yep. on the outside. Yes, right? sir. We're, we're starting to build our defensive line. 
we got to, we're starting to build our offensive line as well, right? And now we're probably going to get a new quarterback. Yeah. Okay. So Gino, no more Gino. Yeah. Gino was, <laughs> he was at the retirement conference for, uh, when Pete Carroll was announcing, which was also like really sad and awesome. Also, at the same yeah. No, he got his chip. I feel Atlanta. like they kind of did him wrong. I'm not going to lie. I like the hiring. Yeah. But I feel like they kind of should have let him go out on his own. You know, so he was pushed out. Is that what happened? Well, yeah. The day before he, uh, but the day before they parted ways, he announced it was on the main headlines on ESPN that he wants to come back. Oh, yes, literally, that's, that's why I it. saw that. Yes, what I was saying. Like, I thought it he was, was going like, like, literally, it wasn't even under NFL. Like, ESPN.com, it was on one of the main uh, topics, and it said Carol announces he, he he's coming back for another season. Wow. And then, literally, not within 24 hours, they said he was leaving. Yeah. Ooh. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I was all surprised when we were talking about it. Like, I thought, I thought he was going to stay for another year or something. So, guess, get this. This is also kind of salt. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Like, they, so I guess they interviewed McDonald, right? The new yeah. coach. And they're like, so what do you think about Pete and whatever? And he's like, I don't know. I haven't even met him yet. <laughs> so, so what? Come on. So they're gotta, completely, they said yeah. he was an advisor and he didn't even have a hand in hiring the head coach. Damn. They can say that. No, yeah, yeah. Unless he just like liked his scheme. Yeah. They could have asked him that, right? Yeah. They could have been like, Hey, like watch, watch his stuff and see like how our personnel goes with like what he yeah. does and, and do you like it and he probably you know said yes but i mean mm -hmm. he never actually met him so. yeah that's so okay. what, what do you see in uh like the style the difference between pete carroll and mcdonald i think you're gonna get more of like a new age like uh the the way he you know in a lot of ways like pete was he was really energetic and youthful but like the way he called a football game was not very youthful okay it, it was kind of old school and, and and the way i kind of i mean it's just too predictable um i think we had some crazy number of like we we ran it like it was like 74% of the time we run on second down <laughs> or like, like some come on, short I, passes, honestly man. my I, like i'm not a, i'm not doesn't I don't have a crazy good memory, but the the number was like startling. Yeah, <laughs> it might it might have even been like ninety. Like some it was might like even say predictable. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and then and then also like I I hated not only you know defensively were we very predictable um, because he just kept trying to recreate what we had before. Yeah. And like not everybody could do that. Right? Yeah. No man. And so he he was the opposite of what this guy's good at. Like okay. we're talking about disguising things and making things look like different. He he was really bad at that. Yeah. He was so um and then offensively, the way he called a game, whenever we would get a lead, very, very um played things really close to the hip. And I what some people would say is uh would play to not play not to lose. So like you get a lead, like a fourteen point mm -hmm. lead, and then all of a sudden you're like and you got it doing whatever you did passing yeah. Yeah. a little, the perfect blend of passing and running. Well, then all of a sudden you get a, a, a two touchdown lead and now you're running the ball three times in a row mm. and you're punting it, kicking it back to the other team because they're stopping you and you stop doing what you did to get there yeah. because you want to take less risk to right. run, the, run the clock. Yeah. Cause if you run the ball, you run the clock. Yeah, definitely. Right? So it's like a so, two for one type but of, if you, yeah. but if you're not running the ball well, yeah, and you're moving the ball, passing it. You you can still run it because you have to keep them honest, right? Yeah. Because otherwise, they're just going to drop back into coverage. Yeah. And but if you if you you know at least show the threat that you're going to run the ball every now and then, then you at least you know or vice versa, it can set set yourself up for either one. Yeah. yeah. If you're yep. passing the ball successfully, they're going to be like, oh God, we have to drop people into coverage. Yep. Then you run the ball because there's less people. People up, up in the line, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So. That's that's kind of what okay. I think we're, we're I think we're gonna be like in a new era of like uh, our offense is hopefully gonna be flying around like that too and we're gonna see a big change. Like, There's actually so another thing uh, I want to bring up is we're talking about the Seahawks uh, Lockett might not be with us next year. I heard that. I mean, it wouldn't oh, surprise yeah, me because yeah. honestly, when Russell left, I said he's he really proved me wrong that year. Like it's almost like Geno made him his target. Yeah. Like, but I didn't anticipate that happening. Like when when Russell left, I thought we should have traded Lockett with him. Probably really? would have done Russell a favor <laughs> yeah, because it true, was like true. his only connection that he's ever had. Really, wow. Yeah, it was the only guy that he could like super rely on, and he never had a guy like that. Mm -hmm. Like while he was in Denver, you know, um, he ended up being super useful to us. Obviously. Oh, a lot, yeah. Super. But and he's he's probably a Hall of Famer Seahawk, not a Hall of Famer like in the, in the NFL, NFL, but, but a Ring of Honor member for the Seahawks. Okay, like for sure because Baldwin is, I think. <laughs> yeah. And, and Lockett shattered all his records. Yeah, well, so. for sure, for sure. But oh, wow. um, 
I didn't yeah. know that. Well, Baldo was only, I mean, he was like a four or five year player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'll need, he, he was with us for that stretch. It was like, like 2012 to like 2018, mm-hmm. 2019. But I think after that, he was gone. Yeah. So short, short span. Yeah. He was really good, though. Same, same with Golden Tate. Yeah. Right? Golden Tate. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah man. It's, uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen next year, but definitely uh, with this yeah. year wrapping up, okay, the, the stage is set. It's a rematch. 49ers yeah. and uh, oh, Chiefs. Yeah. So that's official. It's locked down. Well, it's not down. a rematch. It's, well, rematch from Garoppolo, remember? When, yeah, oh, well, yeah, right, that, right. Yeah, okay, that was. Yeah, last year it was the Eagles. Oh, right. definitely, yeah. Okay. But I'm saying the rematch because they made it there before. Right. So it's like a, you know, uh, we got a, what's his name? Um, uh, quarterback for the 49ers, Young Cat. I forgot his name. Oh, Purdy. Purdy, yeah. yeah that Brock. name just sticks out. Brock. So, so yeah. this is obviously. Game manager. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is a lot of pressure on the dude right now. A lot of pressure. You're at the biggest stage right now where all eyes are on you. You're in the Super Bowl. This is where it all counts and comes down to the yeah. end against a fucking stud of a freaking quarterback from the Chiefs. Ah. You know, the freaking magical fucking yeah. Mahomes. How, okay, boys, what are your predictions? Bro? Who do you, what, what are we thinking? Who's going to take the win on this one? You go first, Brett. I haven't even been paying attention. Yes. <laughs> Flip a coin. Flip a coin. No, okay. like, uh, so, so. I, I've been paying attention at <laughs> the World War Three going on. Okay. <laughs> so, um, basically, you know, it's going to be hard for me to give unbiased commentary. Yeah, yeah. Because I honestly just there's like well, not well, there's very few teams I hate. Like actually, like there's a lot of them I don't like. You know, maybe or I may, maybe don't like a player. Mm-hmm. I like really actually hate the 49ers. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's I just, a true Seahawks fan right Seahawk there. Man. Yeah, that's like, a true I, 12. like, there's nothing that would, I want them to lose like in devastating fashion. You know what I mean? <laughs> just completely. Like, I'm, I'm, like, worse, like, somehow make it worse than what happened to us. So you got to throw like the, like, the, the secondary line out I want, there. Like, I want, uh, like, I want, you want pro- someone to die. I want, nah, not quite, not quite. <laughs> Almost. Jesus. Almost. No like no like heart problems or anything like that, but you know, a couple broken legs. Uh, broken snap bone, you know, snap oh, ankle, you know. Yeah. yeah, maybe some feet turned the wrong way. You Savage. Know? Oh man, you I know. hope there are no okay. 49ers fans watching. I hope there are. This will make a clip. This will make a clip right here. This will make a clip. You're out there. Hide behind your little five foot nine boy. <laughs> Purdy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> He is a little guy. He's how a tall little is he? Game manager. <laughs> he's, he's, I'm sure That's he's a over major six, insult. How tall, how tall is he? He's probably over six foot for sure, right? Oh. The, game, the game manager is about five ten and a half, I think. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He's, I'm so, sure he's over so six foot. So a lot of sure. people are getting the the players are getting all they're like, oh yeah, he's just a game manager, and like, yeah. and they're like saying that all sarcastically, like through through the media, because the media have said that he's he's a great game manager, and the and when someone says that, like. That what they're saying is is that he executes their scheme uh-huh. to perfection, but they're not. The scheme is not built on him. That's what the game manager is, right? Mm-hmm. A game manager is like uh, what Russell Wilson did when he won us the first Super Bowl. Yeah, he he just didn't do dumb shit. Yeah, and then he he would kind of just keep you in it. And then the defense, you, you know, the de- people would make their plays. Basically, yeah. you get the ball in the hands of the people that make plays, right? Definitely. And that's you're what the playmaker. You're the playmaker. He, play does, he does that, right? Yeah. He does that amazingly. But like, you don't see a lot of like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady level. Oh, dude, no, hell no. Like even Russell, Will- like I don't see the. I see a lot of foot in the ground, ball out. Yeah. Like five yards. Yeah. Then the guy runs for sixty. Sure. And then he throws for 300, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of like, I, I don't have any advanced metrics in front of me right now, but there are people that have been saying, standing behind those metrics, saying like his average target, like the, the ball traveling downfield versus the yardage. Uh-huh. It's it's a lot. A lot of it is, is because he's surrounded by an all pro cast of receivers and tight ends. Yeah, and then yeah. he has arguably the greatest running back in the last like five or 10 years. Okay. Okay. Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. He's like minus four hundred every week to score a touchdown, which means that you have to bet like five hundred to win a hundred dollars <laughs> on him to score a touchdown. Wow! Whereas everyone else is like plus three hundred. Yeah. So you bet a hundred and you win four hundred, <laughs> but five hundred you win a hundred. Yeah. Are you fucking serious. <laughs> it's like that. That's how nasty he is, right? Yeah. So he can obvious, catch the yeah. pa- I mean, he's he's got literally everyone around him. He's got an amazing coach. Yeah. Like offensive minded coach, mm-hmm. you know. 
every quarterback he's ever had has been good with him. Yeah. So that's why people say he's a game manager. I was surprised I though that we didn't like it just it, it's it's it was very eye opening to see that Super One Garoppolo was with them. How he just couldn't he just couldn't see ink the deal well, on that one. Man. The hilarious part to me is they cut him over one throw at the end of the game and the Brock Purdy throw that he made that smashed off the opponent's uh, face mask and landed in the guy's hands, but now all of a sudden he's the one. You know, oh, like, oh, <laughs> the I mean, the fucking ball hit the guy. Sorry, hit the guy in the face mask. Uh, so, so what happened was, I don't know. Did you see that play? No, I didn't see that one. No. I, I almost want to pull it up really quick, just so you. Guys oh, we can pull it up. We can pull it up. We can pull it up. See the reaction really quick. So and we're gonna close a, things out. No, here, definitely, but, uh, definitely. No, pull it up. In yeah. other words, though, it's uh, everybody's saying like, like obviously people that really not following sports. Um, I was reading some. Um, Stats that prices went up only because Taylor Swift is attending the Super Bowl now. Uh-huh. So they went up a whopping, I think it was like the normal price for a Super Bowl ticket last year comparison to now was around like 5000 6000 Right now, as we speak, tickets for um, some OK seats are sitting around like nine or 8000 oh, Did man. you hear the price for sweets? Not sweets, a million. 1.2 to four and a half million. For sweets, bro. I heard, yeah. I mean, it, it, dude, if the tip tax was up there, wow. level, we definitely we would be there. And the definitely. only reason why I heard about that is because um, Christian McCaffrey, the guy that I just referenced, yeah. his, his uh, girlfriend is Olivia Copo or Cuopo. Okay. She's like some famous like Victoria's Secret uh, model. Okay. And she bought because McCaffrey, even though he's rich, yeah, he couldn't afford a suite because they were like five million. <laughs> and his wife or his girlfriend bought his family one. Watch this, guys. Look. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, he got it. <laughs> that's that's the one. That was all because of that. What this, an amazing game, quarterback, they, bro! The game literally turned around because of that play, and because they blamed him. And they blamed him, thinking like, "Why'd you do that?" Well, no, they they said, "What a great throw." Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> to the other team. It hit the guy in the it fucking head. Got it hit him in the fucking head. Look at that. <laughs> so that's why you get a starting position as quarterback for the 49ers now, right? Yeah, you. I mean, the only difference between Garoppolo and him is that the ball hit the guy in the face and bounced right oh, to the guy. Oh, what an amazing throw, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, Put him in there, he's starting. <laughs> that's our quarterback. <laughs> you know, and it's like, good Lord, I can't even watch this, dude. I, so. <laughs> so take it off my TV. I, All right. I, I so, honestly, okay, my prediction, yeah. and, on, and I honestly, I and this is partly because I hate the 49ers, right? But I, but I do... Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to be like just not as non-biased as I can, and I just looking at it on paper. How can you bet against Mahomes? Oh, dude! I mean, legend. Literally, this is to me going to solidify the fact, like, because he's going to go to more Super Bowls. Yeah, if he I wins think so. this one, yeah, he's already the goat. Yeah, we were talking about we that. We were too talking last about episode. it. Yeah, man, he's got say. a weak offense. He's literally. I, I, we don't we don't do stats here really too much, yeah. but he's got a <laughs> very, top baby. His wide receivers. Like in in tight ends, all combined in running backs, the like one of the worst drop rates, like in the NFL. Mm. And he's taken these guys, drug them on his back, like he's like pulling wow. a chariot with like fifteen people, drug them to the Super Bowl. Wow! So so that's an that's an athlete, right it's, there, it's like I said before, it's the equivalent, in my opinion, if you're comparing basketball to football, like LeBron taking the Cavs back from three one against the Warriors. The primetime Warriors, right? Yeah. And beating them three times in a row and winning the championship. This is the equivalent of that. If he finishes the job here, it's solidified, it's cemented, right? He's, he's the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, and then you got Tom Brady with his little, his little three little gifts that we talked about last week. <laughs> three little, yeah, 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 yeah. Straight up. It's like he earned them, right? At this one, Mahomes. Well, the one, the first one, he, I don't even want to go on this rant about Brady. <laughs> Brady shouldn't have, the first one was a complete, like, sham, fluke. He should have never made the game. They made up a rule because of him getting the no tuck rule. Call. No tuck rule, right? Yeah. Oh, really? So they yeah. they played the Raiders when John Gruden was the coach. Yeah. To go to go to the Super Bowl, they were in the AFC Championship. It was snowing, really epic yep. game, right? Yep. Brady key play. He's 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 you know he's in the pocket. He throws it. He or he just gets hit. Right. The ball comes out and he goes like this. The ball's already out though. Like he gets hit and the ball jars. He's still in motion, pretty but much. He, yeah. But he didn't have the ball in his hand. Yeah. He just acted like he was throwing it. Yeah. And they called it an incomplete pass. Oh. Instead of it's a fumble, right? They were losing. There was 40 seconds left in the game. Yep. He never would have gone to the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it makes me wonder what would have happened. 
next season. Uh, it would have would been the he, same outcome. Would yeah. he have even gotten the starting job? Mm-hmm, true. Because he threw for like 120 yards that game. Yeah. And they benched Vinny Testaverde, one of the greatest quarterbacks at that time, like top five. They, they like they they he got hurt right. They brought in Brady, went on a little run, kept him out. So it's like, would if he couldn't have completed the run, yeah, wouldn't they have just put Vinny Testaverde back in? Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. it makes you wonder like Each, how things fall. It how, was how a key thing. Fall. Yeah, it was a key thing that moment that solidified what he is yeah. now like a six time Super Bowl champion. Yeah. You know, so and then the rule when it benefited him later. Yeah. Because other people had the same thing happen to them. It's wow. crazy how but that works it, out. It benefited him later on. Yeah. So it's like really crazy, actually, how things happen. So, like yeah, in, like in, in, in conversation of Mahomes yeah. and, you know, Brady, yeah, like when you put it that side to side, I would agree. I mean, it, this is only the beginning for him. He's only 20 years old, young cat. Yeah. 28. You know, 28, right? 28. 28. Uh, Two two Super Bowls, right? He's so he's been to three. He, three. This is his he's fourth. Fourth. He's already won two. Wow. So four Super Bowl. And appearances. the only one they lost was to to Tom Brady. Tom Brady, who, yeah. Well, which was included in my three list list of gifts to Mr. Brady uh-huh. was the Tampa Bay Kansas City thirteen to ten win. Yeah, yeah. Not not not. Yeah, wow. that, was, that was a good wow. game. He didn't win that one. He didn't win that thirteen points. Yeah. I mean, Mahomes didn't win it either. Obviously, yeah. Ten, <laughs> like, right? uh, but so, I mean. So we're, we're I'm taking Kansas. I'm just saying that, that that's Kansas home, City. Yeah, they're taking it. I think they're taking I'm it. I'm taking Kansas City by For a vicious sure. beating, dude. Yeah, because he's been there. He <laughs> yeah. knows how it is. He knows he's yeah. been in the spotlight. Like he knows what it takes to get to this point, and yeah. he's just gonna he's gonna slide that third they're, that third yeah. ring. That's it, man. Yeah, Taylor Swift's gonna right. be dancing. She's gonna be <laughs> dancing after Kelsey. <laughs> we yeah. uh, my 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 boy Scott. He's yeah. been on the pod before. Yeah, shout out Scott. What's up, Huge Scott? Huge 49ers fan. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he's going nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't I'm know you, Scott, but I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, I'm still not going for the 49ers. Yeah. <laughs> We're all Mahomes, boy, right here, baby. We're all Lo- Mahomes. I love you, though. Yeah. I love you. I, I, yeah, you're my so. boy. But uh, and I'm happy for you. I'm happy for <laughs> you. Know, I'm happy that you get you get to watch this. I'm sure he's amped. I'm sure oh, you're yeah. amped. But I can't. I I also can't stand. 49ers, and I don't even know why I hate them. I just hate them. <laughs> it's like part of the Northwest, baby. That's you know, right. I mean, Seattle Seahawks. Really, County. the two most like easily dislike dislike teams for yeah. me are the Cowboys and the 49ers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They're I saw, just too easy. You know to what's hate. so funny about this? I was listening to your pod, your episode last week, and dude, you know my my boy, my my he was the best man at my wedding, <laughs> biggest. Dallas fan, uh, <laughs> and I'm listening to this episode, going, man, my boy, my boy Justin would just be just pissed right now. Oh, <laughs> so, it's like, he, obviously didn't my, do my job. My boy Brad, he's already got beef with two of my boys. We can't even go out drinking together. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, one fan base I do like though that people don't really care for. Which ones? Philly. Okay, yeah, the Eagles, Philly, yeah, the yeah, Eagles. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty rowdy, they're, they're too. They're nasty, yeah. they're crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to, there are some crazy people everywhere. Philly fans, you guys are cool in my book. Yeah. Huh. yeah. I so, always thought they were a little excessive. <laughs> they are, they are. They're, they're a little excessive, but they're passionate. Yeah, passionate. yeah I appreciate okay. that. Say football If you ever do see my big ass walk into that stadium, please do not scream at me. Because I know you so, guys, they form the tunnel of hate when you walk into their stadium. Oh, like, uh, oh, you suck, you fucking idiot. Yeah. 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 Throw shit at you. Just ready to throw right. down right there. It's all right. So, so the, the score then. What what do we think in score? The yeah. score? I want to hear a score uh, prediction. High score, high scoring uh, game or not? I'm thinking for the Kansas. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah Kansas, yeah. right? I'm thinking like thirty to seventeen, Kansas oh. City. Yeah, yeah. You think you think uh, he's going to be able to put it thirty up, huh? Well, I think I think Kansas City is uh, their defense is super good, so there's a chance that they either score on defense uh, or special teams, um, and then I think. Purdy, okay, this is his first Super Bowl. He's a tiny little guy. <laughs> the really, to be honest, it's it's just it's Mahomes' world. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. his decision. It's like it's his for the taking, and there really isn't shit that Purdy can do about it. So you say that's 30, what I think. Yeah. Thirty to what? Seventeen? Thirty to seventeen. I don't. I don't think Purdy's got it. In I there. would We're, say it's gonna be a high scoring game for Kansas. Yeah. I don't know exactly like numbers wise, but no, I. No, you got to give a number. I'll uh, give a number too, and I don't even know sports. I'll say. Uh, I'll say forty plus points on Kansas. <laughs> forty. Okay. Oh, so, what okay, about? So, what about? So, but so yeah, yeah. Just guess. Like so. So usually scores end in three, four, zero, or, or one, yeah, or seven. So you could really pick forty-three. 
43. 43 what about, what? What about uh, 49ers? I'll give them at least two touchdowns. Just two touchdowns on this. 43 14. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. This is I'm, like no lube blast. I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing, but I, I just Damn. know that Kansas is going to win. I, I just, like I said, I'm putting it out there that. Jeez. To me, it just seems this this quarterback for San Fran, dude. Like I said, the first time going to a fucking game at this level, there's no way that I'm gonna believe that he's gonna like do something spectacular to like you know take out Mahomes and his and, and the Chiefs. Yeah, there's no, no way. Right. Right. There's no, no way. Pass. I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm and, and this is gonna make no sense, but I'll go 20, <laughs> 28 Kansas, twenty one. Uh, okay, San Francisco. Maybe not even twenty one. No, that's actually a really common score. Is it really? So, yeah, good job. Good well, job. well, no. I mean, I figured you know three touchdowns, yeah. but I was thinking maybe two touchdowns and a few field goals. So, okay, uh, two 14, touchdowns 15, and a field goal, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So yeah, I'll go twenty-eight, seventeen. 28-17. Good, good one. Okay. Okay. Well, there you have it. So that's those are our predictions. But uh, before we wrap this up, the conspiracy behind this uh, Super Bowl matchup. Do you think it's true? How that Kansas somehow magically made it all the way to the end because of Taylor Swift and all that. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, people no. make about anything. People said the same thing when they were like, "Oh, it's gonna be the uh, it's gonna be the Ravens and the 49ers because the Super Bowl logo. All the logos are like the color, uh, yeah, red the and purple, right? Yeah, yeah. like oh yeah, and like if you look at the last four, you know, whatever yeah. they." <laughs> And it's like, okay, so literally every matchup possible, there's a conspiracy theory. For yeah, right. Uh, no, I, I, you, no, if you're looking for people, it, you could make it. They're, make, they're moving way too fast and in way too much like risk and harm, harm's way to like be able to script Set out. Set something games. out like that. There's no way. All, yeah. and, and let's be real. Some of those guys are really smart guys off the field, but a lot of them are fucking idiots. <laughs> gonna be, you think, really think all everyone in the history of the NFL has always just kept it secret? Right. Yeah. It's not rigged. It would have like, slipped up, right? Yeah. Like maybe, I, the, maybe there's a ref that's been bought, right? True. I can yeah. totally see that happening. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, of course. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. So no conspiracy behind it. All right. Fair enough. And we were also talking about uh, possibly if it if it works with everybody's agenda, um, possibly having a Super Bowl watch party here yeah. for the podcast. I don't I like know. It. I don't know if you want to do yeah. that. We can stream it live. That's what next weekend. Uh, yeah. Next weekend. Yeah. We could literally just set it up like have have a bunch of food like we're having a party. But since we'd have the mics and stuff, I probably wouldn't want to invite over like a ton of people. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably or maybe even just us. Yeah. Or like, I mean, maybe a couple of our homies. Maybe. I, don't I mean, for me, I would probably just bring myself. I mean, I think I think a couple buddies of mine are gonna watch it. Uh, at their own spot, so I mean, okay. it'll probably just be me. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's up to you guys, but we can definitely yeah. talk about it off pod. Definitely make get that some happen. Grub, yeah, oh, for sure. Some wings, like you said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buffalo wild wings. Okay, yeah. cool. We'll talk about that now. Yeah. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna wrap this one up. And as always, uh, definitely go check out our past previous content. You can find us anywhere. Make it easy for yourself. We have an Instagram page, Beyond Exposition Podcast. Um, link in our bio. You'll find all the links there provided for you. Um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Tune From Radio, YouTube, you name it. Um, go follow us on there. Subscribe, like, comment, you name it. You know, you know what it is. But we're gonna catch you in the next one. Unless you guys have any anything else to say, we're gonna close it out. You covered it beautifully. All right. So we'll catch you in the next one. Have a fantastic week when this releases, weekend, you name it, all that stuff. We'll catch you in the next episode. We love you. Take care. Peace. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs>